Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Joe Biggs, and guess what? You're seeing a Proud Boys leader announcing plans for January 6th. Except this time, and you know who it is when I say we, but this time we're not going to be wearing the colors that you're used to seeing us in. Nope. This time, myself and other leadership have decided we're going to go incognito. We're going to be blending in, weaving in and out like a motherfucking old lady with some goddamn pins in her hand, making a goddamn sweater. You ain't going to know who the fuck it is standing beside you. It could be Antifa. It could be me. Joe Biggs is one of five Proud Boys now charged with sedition for their roles on January 6th. The group was among hundreds of rioters who stormed the Capitol that day. But you wouldn't really know it from the footage. Because, just as Biggs outlined, they deliberately tried to blend in with the crowd. But building on the work of online researchers, the New York Times spent months finding Proud Boys in videos of January 6th. Our analysis shows, for the first time, how central they were to the Capitol attack. We'll reveal how again and again they instigated critical breakthroughs around the Capitol by repeating the same tactics. Target an access point, rile up the crowd, join the violence, and reassess if police resist them. We combed through dozens of court records that included thousands of their text messages that show how Proud Boy leaders crafted a chain of command specifically for January 6th. Our investigation traces how an organized and violent group with a history of supporting Donald Trump came to his aid as he desperately tried to cling to power. This is exactly what was paid. And were catalysts in a vicious attack on American democracy. I am a Western chauvinist. This is Enrique Tarrio, leader of the Proud Boys. I refuse to apologize for creating the modern world. The green modern world! The group is notorious for street brawling and facing off against far-left activists known as Antifa. When President Trump refused to disavow them in a televised debate, would you like me to condemn proud boys Ooh, and right proud, proud boys? boys stand back and stand by. Stop the seal! Tario responded by posting, "Standing by, sir." Stop the seal! Stop the seal! Validated by a sitting president, they became more political than ever. If you think Biden's gonna fucking win, you're fucking. And if he somehow does win, oh. <laughs> There's going to be hell to pay because Biden doesn't have these kind of people showing up. I'm going to tell you right now, this guy is the epitome of leadership. When Trump first advertises a January 6th rally in D.C. and says it will be wild, Proud Boy leaders immediately put a plan in motion and assemble a special unit for the day. In text messages revealed by court documents, Biggs tells Tario, let's get radical and get real men. They enlist a hand-selected group out of thousands of members nationwide and chart out a leadership structure called the Ministry of Self-Defense, including over 90 recruits. The Proud Boys say this was to defend against Antifa, but messages suggest there was more to their mission. Some recruits are so-called rally boys who are prepared to get rowdy. Leaders tell the recruits to, quote, fit in or fuck off. Recruits are told to meet at the Washington Monument the morning of the 6th. And that's where we see their strategy for the day take shape. One of the leaders, Ethan Nordeen, separates the top tier from recruits. A court order prevented Tario from attending. So Nordeen, Joe Biggs, and Zachary Rail lead the group. They set off, not for Trump's rally, but for the Capitol. It's this hand-selected group that we will follow through the day, some of whom have varying ties to the official Proud Boys organization. Telegram messages from that morning show that some of the Proud Boys intend to rile up other protesters. A pep talk from Joe Biggs gives a preview of what's to come. Crowd. 
and momentum builds as they near the capital. The first time we see the Proud Boys tactics at play is just 15 minutes before Congress is set to begin certifying the election results. They target an access point here on the west side of the Capitol and begin to rile up the crowd. Until now, protesters have stayed behind police lines. In minutes, that changes. In what is widely viewed as a tipping point, a protester named Ryan Samsel talks to Joe Biggs and immediately confronts the police. Biggs and other leaders look on. Samsel later told the FBI that Biggs encouraged him to confront the police, something Biggs denies. As the crowd pushes forward, many of the Proud Boys join in. They start removing barricades and urge others on. A chain reaction has been set off. The attack on the Capitol has begun. And Proud Boys lead the charge, removing more barricades at the next police line. They scuffle with officers and break through the line again. The crowd sweeps the West Plaza. For the next hour or so, police will try to hold off these rioters, including Proud Boys, from storming the building. Proud Boys make up a significant portion of the front line here. The Times spent months analyzing the scene to locate them, and there are likely more than we found. Many worked as teams, like this group in tactical gear. And these, marked with orange. But to blend in, most Proud Boys are deliberately dressed in plain clothes instead of their signature black and yellow. Again, some rile up the crowd. Others clash with officers. They're also communicating with each other at this time. On Telegram, a fellow Proud Boy tells the group to push inside the Capitol. One of the leaders responds, we are trying. It's further evidence of their collective intent. But they change their approach when police with riot control weapons arrive and restore some control of the terrace. We know from their communications that leaders told members to expect contingency plans and that they'd work in teams. And over the next few minutes, we see some of these teams falling back in a coordinated fashion. Starting with the leaders, Biggs and Nordine, at 1.25 p.m. Another group at 1.26. And another at 1.28. You just stole a riot shield? Yeah. Wow. One leader, Zachary Rail, sends an update from the plaza. He texts, we're at a standstill. Key groups like Biggs and Nordines hang back and look on for about 15 minutes. When they re-enter, they avoid the standoff with police and instead target two new access points to the building, where Proud Boys will lead fresh efforts to get inside. First, we'll follow one Proud Boy moving over to the east. His name is Ronald Lork. Stop by 25 officers. Don't back down, patriots. The whole fucking world is watching. To the crowd around him, he looks like any other protester. 
but he was hand-picked by Nordin, one of the top leaders and a well-known far-right figure, to be on the front lines on the 6th. Over text, Lork told Nordin that he would bring, quote, three bad motherfuckers with him. A little before 2 p.m., we see Lork, with a few other Proud Boys, heading for the east side, where for hours, hundreds of protesters have remained behind the barricades. But within minutes of these Proud Boys arriving, the police will be overrun. It's their playbook in action again. One of Lork's team antagonizes officers at the front, while another clears away barricades. The momentum tips. The crowd easily breaks through the police line and sweeps through the next barrier as Proud Boys take down fence after fence. Suddenly, all the way down the eastern line, the crowd pushes past police and takes over the plaza. We'll return there shortly. Back on the west side, the crowd has made little headway against the officers on the plaza. And some Proud Boys have gathered here instead, off to the left by a scaffolding that leads up to building entrances. It's a key access point that's slightly guarded. And when Joe Biggs and his team rejoin the fray, that's exactly where they go. Within two minutes of Biggs's arrival, over a dozen Proud Boys are now trained on that entrance. And they attack the police. They've unleashed the crowd around them again. Kicking off a fierce 20 minute battle for the scaffolding. It's the closest yet the mob has come to the lawmakers inside, who are still in session. Again, Proud Boys stay at the front. When police start using weapons here, Joe Biggs retreats again with a small team. They stand to the side and watch from the lawn. Some of them peel off and head for the east side of the Capitol, where Biggs will meet them later. And when the rioters finally win the scaffolding, Biggs follows up the stairs after them. This is exactly what was feared. Proud boy Dominic Pozzola is one of the first rioters to breach the building. And just as he does throughout the day, Biggs follows just a minute behind. At this point, the Proud Boys have been critical players in five major advances. But they aren't done. Biggs, what you gotta say? After Biggs enters, he exits almost immediately to the east of the building. We don't know why, but in the chaotic crowd, he manages to team up again with the Proud Boys who left him some minutes earlier. In the background of this clip, we also hear Biggs on the phone, arranging to meet up with Ethan Nordin, also known as Rufio. Biggs makes his way up to the central stairs on the east side. Other rioters have tried, but so far failed, to fully break in here. You're in my way! Calm down. You're in my way! I'm trying to get in too! All right? I'm trying to get You're in You're in my way! Lork, who we saw removing barricades earlier on the east, is already near the front.
and two of the Proud Boys we saw him with earlier use chemical spray against the police. When rioters already inside the Capitol help open these doors, Lork is one of the first to spill inside. Biggs's group is right behind him. Entering from the opposite side at this time is Nordine, who makes his way into the same foyer. By now, it's mayhem. Congress is in lockdown. Lawmakers are being evacuated and the peaceful transfer of power has been stalled. Hundreds of rioters are milling around inside the Capitol. And at the heart of it all are the Proud Boys leaders. Treason! 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 The group fans out across the building. Where's the rest of everybody? There's not enough of us. They're going to bring guns in or something. Nancy Pelosi. Let's vote on some shit! And later celebrate on Telegram. Lawyers for the Proud Boys have denied that there was any prearranged plan or conspiracy to storm the Capitol. After over a year, the country is still grappling with what really happened on January 6th. As our analysis shows, the Proud Boys played critical roles from the first moment of violence to multiple breaches of the Capitol, while leaving the impression that it was just ordinary protesters leading the charge. The arrest of individual members has not deterred the organization or the far-right extremist movement they embody. And the Proud Boys continue to hold nationwide events. As their now former chairman, Enrique Tarrio, would like you to know. Love them or hate them, the Proud Boys aren't going anywhere. We're here to stay.